Hi and welcome to Chicky Witcher Cooking's Scotch eggs made in the pie maker. I've got some boiled eggs here, I've got some pork and veal mince, and I've got some panko breadcrumbs. We're going to have this as simple as possible. Great picnic food. Kids love them. Great in the lunch boxes. Now, Alice has asked me a question. Can we use patty papers? These are Christmas, whatever, in our pie maker to make our recipe. So I'm going to try a couple of patty papers to show you, Alice, and then show you the ones that don't have the patty papers and see if that makes any difference to you. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is add Add a little bit of pepper to our seasoned flour and the balance of it goes in our mince. Half of our veggie salt goes into our seasoned flour and the balance goes into our mince. We just shake that all around now and then we're going to roll our eggs in there and that will make like a glue for our mince to stick to our eggs. Then we're going to roll them in panko breadcrumbs. Now the reason that I'm using panko breadcrumbs is because they're nice and crispy and I'm going to show you something that's quite unusual. I'm going to pour oil onto my panko breadcrumbs because if I go to spray oil or brush oil onto the panko breadcrumbs after they've been put onto our scotch eggs it's not going to work so if you pour oil onto already crunchy panko breadcrumbs and toss them all around the oil will be all over the breadcrumbs and they will actually stick to the meatballs which are adhering to our scotch eggs so just put that to one side the oil isn't going to make them soggy at all because there's no moisture in it now we're going to divvy our mince up into eight portions and mold them around eight boiled eggs. So just pour an egg in there that's going to help bind it. Just use a bit of flour in there if you like. And we're just going to mix this all around. The way that you make meat stick to things without having too much binder is by working the meat. Meat doesn't have gluten in it, but it sort of makes it glutinous. I don't know if you understand that or not, but we're just going to smush this up with very clean hands and divvy it up. Salt also makes it stick together as well. And we've got our veggie salt in there, of course. So just smush this all around divvy it up into eight equal portions now we don't want a big thick coating on our eggs because we need the meat to cook without being soggy on our breadcrumbs and it obviously has to fit into the pie maker receptacle if you want to you could use these in the air fryer as well because the crumbs have already been greased okay we're going to divvy that into eight okay nice and even we've got them fairly equal without using a measuring just eyeball that you don't need to get too precise with that because the eggs are going to be different sizes anyway probably okay that's that put that to one side now here's the fun part we're going to mix up our seasoned flour and roll our eggs in it now the eggs have just been shelled so they're, they're still damp and that's going to make the flour stick to them so just throw our eggs in there. We've got four, med four pie magic, so we're just going to roll our eggs. Just use a Chinese food container or a plastic bag or a Tupperware container, whatever you have at your disposal, and you'll be able to sort of make sure that the eggs are well and truly rolled in flour. Now we're going to flatten this completely out, completely like the thinnest patty you can imagine. And we're going to pop one of our eggs on top of it and then envelop, okay? So just keep smooshing it around until all of the mince or ground meat has completely covered that egg. Pretty simple so far, right? You have to agree. And the egg is actually sticking to that mince. Now, done like a meatball and now we're going to throw that one straight into our breadcrumbs and roll it around now they're going to stick to that and we're going to take them out and we're going to do a couple of them in our in our, in our christmas patty papers alice sorry about that you can probably keep this till december this recipe okay and do the same with the rest so just squash our meat right out get our egg which is hard boiled obviously if you're clever enough to be able to shell a soft boiled egg all the better uh, it can be done but uh, Rich is doing some kitchen renovations for me at the moment and that's not going to happen with the state of my kitchen so we're just going to get four on and we'll show you what they look like so just continue with the rest don't worry about that flour it will actually cook to the meat and it won't taste raw or anything like that now no egg and bread crumbs and everything flour and egg and bread crumbs and whatnot with this recipe because we're doing it in a, a, a dry frying environment or baking environment if you like with the pie magic and get our other egg stick it in the middle and cover it all up and you can see it's sticking quite well you could use sausage mince you could use turkey mince any mince that you like i just happen to like the pork and veal mince because it's got a lovely flavor not too much fat and not too strong and we are all completely covered in crumbs okay good job put those other four eggs in there and we'll attend to those shortly right now we get our crumbs and you can see they're 
sticking to it quite easily and press them in. You want them to press into that meat. Initially, they will want to get a little bit soggy, but you can actually finish them off with the lid open. And most of the heat obviously is in the bottom of the pie maker. And this is a way of cooking if you don't have a fry pan or access to an oven and you don't want to be deep frying. So Alice, this is for you. These two are going into patty papers and we're going to see how they fare. Now, because these are holding the shape so well, you can actually use the, the paper cross method that I showed you in our fish cake recipe. So that's that. We'll just press the rest onto these other ones here. Now the pie maker is preheating and it has been while I've been talking. So what we're going to do is pop these into the pie maker and give it a light brush with some of our leftover vegetable oil that's stuck to the little container that I was using or you could spray it if you like but it's not really very good to use spray oil in your pie maker. Something to do with the propellant. Okay now we've just got a tiny bit of oil here that's going to be sufficient to give this a bit of a coating bearing in mind that our scotch eggs have already been coated in oil and we're just going to brush the top as well. Put two in and put our paper ones. This is for you Alice. We'll see how these go, eh? And close the lid. Now, they're quite firm. I've used 500 grams of mince there with eight eggs. So we're just gonna put that in for about eight to 10 minutes and check it periodically because we need to make sure that it doesn't burn. And continue with the rest. Now Susie doesn't have a pie maker, but I think she has an air fryer. So I'm going to show you a way of having crumbed food in your air fryer. I've got a tea for air fryer. Yeah, I've just taken the paddle out. I don't want these to get <laughs> rumbled around in the jungle. And I'm just gonna pop them in there like that. No need to oil the bottom because as I said, the crumbs are already oiled. And we're gonna put those in the air fryer for about 10 minutes. Turning them as we go because there's no other way of agitating them. Okay, after five minutes, this is what you should have. See how lovely and brown they're getting? I don't even think I'll have to turn those over. The ones that are in the patty papers are hanging in there as well. We might just have a little look underneath and see what sort of arrangements are happening. Well, you can turn them. There you go. Scotch eggs in the pie maker. What did you think of that, Alice? Can't really turn the ones in the patty papers though. And they aren't frying up as nicely and as crisply as what the other ones are. So just pop them back in there. Okay, 10 minutes later. And this is what you should have. They are crispy. They are risen. They are perfectly round. They're looking pretty funky. The ones without the patty papers are actually, look at that, nice and crispy all over. I'll show you how crispy. Okay. The ones in the patty papers aren't as crispy, but I hope that answers your question, Alice. And we're just gonna pop the other two in there and give them another 10 minutes. Now, 10 minutes in the air fryer and they still need a lot more time. So this is much faster. Hasn't heated the kitchen up and they look and smell divine. Just close that for another 10 minutes. Okay, let's cut these open and see what they look like, shall we? Just go right to the center. <laughs> Tell me that isn't the easiest scotch egg you've ever seen. I'm going to have taste. Screaming hot. Look at the steam coming off that. What am I thinking? Yummo. Mm -hmm. Yum. Crispy, moist meat on the outside. Eggs warmed up. Beautifully cooked. It's an absolute delight. I surprise myself with my crazy ideas sometimes. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is the taste test. The, the pie maker one is actually crunchier. The one that's in the patty paper does release from the patty paper, but it doesn't brown on the sides because this is an insulator between the patty paper and the surface of the pie maker. Now this is the air fry one. This actually took about 20 minutes. It is crunchy, but not nearly as crunchy. It does look a little bit more rustic and this is a bit more formed, almost looks like a, oh gee, I don't know, like a ball one. And this is like more like a homemade one. But I think the crumbs have crossed it into this nicely and this took nearly twice as long. So you be the judge. They all taste exactly the same. I hope that answers your question. I hope this helps Susie. I hope this helps Alice and I hope this helps everybody who's got a pie maker. Thanks for watching.